Okay, we're recording. All right, I think we're going to move forward. So I'm going to start with an intro. And do I have the credentials to offer any input? Because my goal today is to make a massive difference in your life, to pivot, if you will. I'll use an analogy what I mean by pivoting or paradigm shift. A guy's on BART. His kids are out of control, unruly. The dude next to him is like, dude, what's wrong with you? Your kids are out of control. And the guy looks over and says, yes, I'm sorry, their mom died. Mm. That's the paradigm shift. That's somebody that went from judgment to empathy just like that. I'm a strange personality. I'm very disciplined and very driven, but I have a high level of compassion and empathy. About three years ago, I gained 60 pounds. I've always been in shape. To say that society treats you differently is an understatement. To say that tying my shoes and huffing and puffing hurt is an understatement. There's a massive difference with being in condition and not being conditioned. I have three daughters, Haley, Rachel, and Brianna. They're all in great shape. And they're beautiful, humble, and intelligent. And it ties back to how they feel about themselves. And when you look in the mirror, that speeds into everything. Your confidence everywhere. Three years ago, Ronnie Parada is on here. She's BR222. I've known her for 35 years. She's been the mother I never had. The mortgage industry, I did very well for two years, and then it collapsed. And I had to suddenly get into the purchase business. And I was a bodybuilder making a lot of money, and all the realtors wanted to tell me to FO. And I latched my wagon to this woman. And I knew if I could get her, she was the sergeant arms at the Fremont marketing meeting. She honked that freaking horn. I could get anybody. And I built a business where we did hundreds of thousands of loans. And the start of it was working with her and getting her to give me the credentials. So I want to thank her that she's here today. Brian Mitchell, she's here today and she's with us and I'm super excited. So my me. vision is to make a difference. To give you- I've known, I known Ronnie a long time. I used to, I started training at her husband's gym. Right. Full circle, baby. There's Bob. <laughs> so my thing today is I want to make a difference. And so I'm going to challenge your belief systems. Or call it BS. Bullshit. Most belief systems are shaped by Facebook, <clears throat> shaped by your friends, and shaped by the information you gather in. And with all due respect, a lot of them are a little off kilter. When I share something, I'm coming from a place of personal experience, not Googling whatever. The food space is so broken. When I got into eight years ago, it took me two years to get a return phone call because they're like, wait, you're a startup. You're not using sugar. Click. And the whole industry is bad. Remember 12 years ago, you had fat free snack wells and all that. That was a smoke screen because the sugar companies own the FDA. And they just put this whole smoke screen. They knew this was a problem. Millions of people got killed because of it. Because you got to realize 90% of all disease comes from insulin resistance. The lowest cancer rates in the world are Muslims. Because they do Amadan once a year where they don't eat during the day. For 30 days, they don't eat during the day. They eat at night as much as they want. Their cancer rates are 90% less. And when I heard this thing, F cancer. Don't eat carbohydrates. We all have cancer cells in our body. Three things get them excited. Sugar, anaerobic, that's a lack of oxygen in your bloodstream, and acidic blood, that's stress. So you have a cigarette smoker eating donuts, stressed, they're getting cancer. It all ties back to insulin resistance. And think of insulin when it's going through your veins, it's sandpaper through your veins. And every time it gets that sandpaper, your body produces cholesterol and calcifies that. And it builds up and you get blockage and that blockage breaks off at some point, here's a stroke. So do I have your permission? Let's imagine, just for, 
if, if you guys are going to work out in the gym with me, you know you're going to get results. But it may hurt a little. <laughs> well, I have your permission to challenge your belief systems today because it's going to sting a little bit. But I believe if I do so, we'll all gain immensely. Anybody against challenging the belief system, Ryan? Not at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm not a medical doctor. Okay. I'm not claiming to be a medical doctor. <clears throat> about what Bill does. Okay. And I like Q and A's. If you have a question, know that somebody else has the question. Somebody else is thinking it, but they fear judgment and fear that somebody's going to, they feel embarrassed. So just raise your hand. We will do a Q&A at the end, but during the process, feel free to ask me questions or whoever, okay? All right, a um, little bit about me. I'm 240 pounds right now, I'm 8% body fat. I feel like I'm 20 years old. I have a massive amount of energy and I'm happy and I feel good. And I recently was walking with a guy with a net worth of 50 million who was hobbling around and I said, would you give me half your net worth if I could give you 20 years to your life? And he said, yes. If you just make a couple adjustments right now, you can add 20 quality years to your life. It's that simple. So right now, my blood pressure is 115 over 75. My A1C is 51. Resting glucose is 78. And I just had a coronary calcium CT scan. And this is where they look at your arteries. Three of my arteries are zero. One artery is at 34. Anything less than 100, you cannot have a stroke. 100 to 200, you have a high probability. Above 200, you're going to have a stroke. 3,000 people will have strokes tomorrow that are 100% predictable and 100% preventable. But Western Med hasn't tossed that. They're all about drug dealing and selling drugs. So mm -hmm. I'm going to pass the screen over to Brian Sherwood. He's my partner of six years. He has a BA of biology out of University of Pacific. He's a certified fitness nutritional coach for six years, has worked by my side, and he runs the most successful max muscle in the country. So Brian, please tell us about insulin resistance. Yeah, sure. A little bit, uh, just a little bit more about me. So I was a fat kid. Uh, always athletic, but fat, lost 80 pounds between my junior and senior year uh, to play, play division one athletics. And I'm very familiar with the struggle that people go through with, with weight. Um, and so, you know, I'm speaking like Bill, I'm speaking from experience. I've actually been here over 20 years in the industry, almost 25. And I see what I see the most is shitty diets and shitty diets cause insulin resistance so careful the words brian we got a youtube for kids go ahead oh yeah gosh darn it sorry <laughs> uh beat me out um so basically insulin resistance bill kind of touched on it already um how bad how bad the, the insulin is um and what it does as far as increasing calcium levels in the in the arteries and veins and causing strokes but basically, when you eat carbohydrates, any carbohydrate ultimately gets broken down into glucose, which then, regardless of whether it's uh, with or without oxygen, it gets broken into ATP and you get energy from it. Um, however, when you eat that carbohydrate and it gets broken down, it releases sugar into your blood. Well, then the pancreas secretes insulin. Insulin takes that sugar and it either uses it for energy, it stores it in the muscles or liver as glycogen, um, or it can, if you eat excess, it, it causes fat storage. So what insulin resistance is, when you consistently eat sugar, basically it takes more and more insulin, or sugar and carbohydrates in general, it takes more and more insulin to do the same thing. So you know if you eat X amount of sugar, and your body is operating well, you know, it might only take Y amount of insulin. But if you eat X amount of sugar and you've built insulin resistance, now it takes Y times two. So what happens is your pancreas has to secrete more and more and more insulin until eventually it gives up. And that's when you become diabetic. So you become a type two diabetic at first. And, you know, if you don't take care of it, then eventually you become uh, insulin dependent where your pancreas shuts down completely 
and you have to rely on on uh, exogenous insulin in order to to process carbohydrates. Entirely preventable. Um, I actually have worked with uh, type one type one diabetics that have got off almost almost off insulin entirely, reduced by ninety percent and upwards of about twelve to sixteen weeks just with diet, just by limiting carbohydrates uh, and increasing protein. So. Insulin resistance is not something you have to deal with. It's not hereditary. It is entirely self-induced. Um, one thing about, about insulin resistance and sugar and carbohydrates ultimately because they break down into sugar is almost all of the disease that we face is, is pre preventable. Um, and it's almost all caused by excess sugar. So cancer, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, they all are a result of eating too much, too much carbs, too much sugar, um, which then causes insulin, insulin resistance, which leads to all of these diseases. So the average person eats a mound of sugar, almost 200 pounds of sugar annually. And it, it's, it's, it's utter insanity. You, you think, oh, I just drink one soda here and there. But a soda has like, 40 grams of sugar, which is like eight, uh, eight teaspoons of sugar. I mean, that is just, it's an absurd amount of sugar. And you have some people that drink four, five, six, seven, eight, nine a day. And then there's a lot of stuff that the carbohydrates and the sugar are hidden. You don't even think about it. Like for instance, milk, 11 grams of sugar, yogurt, 19 grams of sugar. So there's a lot of things that you really, really have, have to look out for. You've got to limit your carbohydrate and sugar intake. Um, because ultimately your body doesn't know the difference because at all, any carb you eat becomes sugar. It could be the best carb in the world. You can eat oatmeal, you can eat sweet potato, you can eat, you know, brown rice. It, ultimately it's broken down into glucose and then either used as energy, stored as fat or stored in the liver uh, and muscles as glycogen. So the, the problem with this, this entirely preventable situation is that, you know, almost 10,000 people die a day based on bad bad diets, really, and lack of information. They just don't know what to do. People don't know, like, hey, I have cancer. I should stop eating carbohydrates because carbohydrates fuel cancer. You know, I should not eat carbs, get sleep, limit stress, and the cancer has a very hard time growing. And so, you know, there are some really, really small changes, like Bill was saying, that you can make in your life to fight it, to either fight these diseases that you've you've gotten or to avoid them entirely. And it's just a simple. I think he That's muted himself. So, so that's where, where keto comes in. Um, keto uh, originally was a super high fat diet, uh, developed for epileptics, but what's become generally recognized as, as, as healthy is you reduce carbohydrates, you eat enough protein, your body goes into ketosis where it burns fat exclusively for energy. So when you are in ketosis, you're not going to have blood sugar spikes. You're not going to have insulin responses because you're not eating carbohydrates. So you completely eliminate any, any type of of stress on the pancreas. Also, if you have been eating bad and you have developed insulin resistance, reducing carbohydrates and increasing protein will reverse that insulin resistance. So that's extremely important to understand. It's not like, hey, my pancreas doesn't work. I have to take metformin or I have to take berberine or whatever the doctor tells you to take and you're gonna be on it for life. That's not the case at all. Pro realistically, most people that are you know, either early onset or, or type two diabetes can get off drugs in a month. If they just stop eating carbs, um, again, I'm not a doctor, but that's been my experience. And I've worked with thousands of people over the last 20 years for meal planning. So the bottom line is you, you eat, eat uh, low carb, eat keto, and you will get phenomenal results. You'll lose fat. You'll feel great. You'll be healthier. And that's kind of what we're all about is uh, making people healthy. It's what I've been doing for 20 years in my, my line of work. So it's what I enjoy. I don't like being hungry. And What's that? I said, I don't like to be hungry. And so well, it's amazing to me 
how many people think you have to diet or you have to be hungry. It is not the truth. That is a belief system that's BS. You can eat as much as you want. Now, a lot of people, whoa, whoa, what do you mean? <clears throat> it's about the right foods. And it's about small moves you can live with. Diets do not work. Lifestyles work. You adopt little changes. A couple of years ago, my brother was battling being overweight. We did one thing. He used to drink that creamer, like a, a gallon a week, some huge bottle a week creamer. I just moved him to flavored protein drinks, which he liked more. And he dropped 40 pounds. He didn't go to the gym. He didn't change dinner. So it's all about doing little things we can live with and adopt to. And it's always about having one day a week where you're not thinking food is fuel. Okay. Uh, Saturday night, I went out with my lady friend and we had $42 of Taco Bell. Okay. And I haven't done that in a very long time. And for two days, I paid dearly for it. I will not do it again. Food is fuel. Sex is comfort. And when you distinguish that food is about fueling your body, nothing more, nothing less. And whatever you have going on in your life, you, you make that stimulating enough. We're not using food for comfort. I know it very well. I gained 60 pounds in a short period of time because I was depressed. And that weight gain made me more depressed and it made me more tired and made me not want to look at, so you get the story. So the whole thing is, is how do we do small changes? I'm 59 now, I feel like I'm 20. And my goal is the last third of my life is the best years of my life. And you can't do anything without your health. You can't be a good father, you can't be a good wife, you can't do anything. And it's 100% starts here. And so my goal is to give you little things that you can do and live with where it doesn't feel like sacrifice and it doesn't feel like hunger. If you limit your carbohydrates, because you got to realize 100 years ago, nobody was overweight. There was 10 pounds of sugar and food a year. Now it's almost 200 pounds, a half pound a day in ketchup, cereal, soda, whatever. If your kids drink soda, you're better off getting methamphetamines and cocaine because soda is 10 times worse than all drugs and alcohol together. So don't fool yourself when you make a choice for your children that you're making the right choice. And it is very sad what I see happening. My daughter's 10 years old in Pleasanton. I would say 80% of the kids are overweight and ignorance is not an excuse. If I go out and get drunk, and I mow down somebody's family, and I said, oh, I didn't mean it, I was drunk. It does not take away from the impact. We now have the information. Carbohydrates and sugar kills 9,000 people a day, and half our kids are having their life reduced from 78 years old to 58 because the parents are not paying attention to what's going on. I don't feel there's an excuse, and it's been very hard to get here because if you mention to a mom, that she's killing the kids, rather than say, thank you for the information, she doubles back and gets offended. Well, I'm okay with that because I like the way my daughters are. And their confidence shows up with everything in their life and their successes is no accident. And I, I really love making a difference and this community is getting bigger. So if we want to avoid all these pitfalls, you got to start paying attention to carbohydrates. And it even gets simpler than that. The food that I have designed is about integrating your life and you still have the same dinner, still go out Friday night, you still have cocktails, maybe not mixed cocktails, you do vodka sodas, little changes and you'll get the results. And I, I'm telling you, I never was heavy in my life. And those six months I was heavy, I met Ronnie at Starbucks three years ago and the way she looked at me, I knew I was a fat slob. And I went back to my bodybuilding friend. He walked up. He goes, Hoagie's fat. Hoagie's fat. It was a reality check. And it took me three years to get back in a place where I like being me again. For a long time, I didn't. And I was not a great father. And I was very miserable. 
And it's all 100% preventable by some simple choices. Now, gentlemen, pay attention. A coronary calcium CT scan is going to save your life. Half of you right now are walking around clogged arteries. Ignorance is not an excuse. Just because you don't know doesn't mean it's not going on. Now, the doctors do not want to give you this test. It's a CT scan of your heart, and it tells you how open your arteries are. My scan, three arteries at absolute zero. I have no buildup, and one is at 34. The one at 34, anything under 100, you're golden. 100 to 200, you have a possibility of a stroke. Above 200, get ready to go to the hospital. It's that simple. And I watch so many men walk around blindly, not knowing what their risk is. Now, you have children and you have friends that will miss you. And like I said, there's two people in my media group that I warned in the last year, you're going to have a heart attack and you're going to get cancer. And it both happened. And they both said to me, I'm so bummed I didn't listen to you because your lives are over. They're, they're done. They're done as you know it. Because once you have a heart attack, you're going to think about that every day of your life. Everything is different. Okay. So coronary calcium TT scan. Your doctors are going to frown on it because the whole health industry is not about proactive. It's about reactive. It's about drugs. And you got to realize these doctors, with all due respect, and again, I'm not a doctor. You got to talk to them. They were taught nutrition about 20 years ago, and they took a class for three months. They're not even aware of insulin resistance. No, not not even. Not, that are actually dispensing insulin. Uh, Brian. Not even three months. The doctor has four hours of nutrition in medical school. <laughs> four hours. And I can't tell you how many unhealthy people go, my doctor this, my doctor that. Yep. All the time. Be careful who you listen to. Okay. Who are you listening to? Do you want their life or do you want a better life? So coronary calcium CT scan, it's money in the bank. You've got to either pay for yourself. It's about a thousand or you've got to convince your doctor. Wink, wink. I'm not feeling good. My heart, all that stuff. It took me seven months to finally get the okay. I'm telling you, that's the greatest gift I can give you because it's the only way you know if you're not going to drop dead tomorrow. Now, here's the big one. Is it possible to get off insulin if you're a type 2 diabetic? To that end, I'm going to introduce Anthony Segovia. He um, has been a client of mine for about four months. He hosts a YouTube channel with 20,000 followers. He had a managed position at Countrywide. Those in the mortgage business know what that is. And he worked for Channel 2 for a while. To that end, let's welcome Anthony. Welcome, Anthony. <laughs> Hey, hey, Bill, how you guys doing? Good. Um, so long story short, um, gained a lot of weight in my 20s. Um, you know, just being in the mortgage business, you know, you're, we're, you know, in a way we're, we're, we're lazy, but we're not, you know, I was in a, more of an office guy. I wasn't, you know, hitting the pavement, handling the realtors, nothing like that. Uh, more of an order taker, but um, gained a lot of weight. Um, and uh to what took my life insurance exam and uh, they told me, Hey man, uh, you know, your levels are kind of out of whack here. And I didn't know what they were talking about. Blood sugars were, Oh uh, God, I think we were like 280 at the time. And keep in mind, this was when I was, I'm 37. Now this is when, this was over 10 years ago. So didn't do anything about it. Didn't, didn't take any insulin, nothing. No, no metformin. Um, so b blood sugars were out of whack for a long time. Um, so about five months ago, um, met Bill, um, and gone on his program. Um, and keep in mind, I've been, I've been going to the doctors and they were, you know, they were pushing up until about a year ago, they were pushing insulin, metformin, all these, all these drugs on me. Um, basically, you know, I felt like crap. Um, I don't know if I can say that on here, but you know, I felt, felt horrible every day. Um, I wasn't in the mood to do anything. I, I, I want to comment started. real quick, Anthony. I'm worried about the 9,000 people that are going to die tomorrow and every day, not people's feelings, just FYI. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I was, I was feeling just like crap. I mean, you get you, for those of you who have diabetes, I have type two diabetes. Um, 
those of you who have it and you have high blood sugars that are in the fours, you probably know what I'm talking about. You just, you just feel, you just don't feel yourself. And it's hard to explain it unless you actually go through it. Um, so yeah, um, met Bill about five months ago. And uh, how long did it take you to get off insulin, Anthony? It took me about, I want to say about close to 30 days. Okay, so three, I'm going to be between three weeks to 30 days. When I met Anthony, I saw a man that had so much water retention edema. It was like Ronnie watching me at Starbucks, but 10x. I could see the struggle. I could see the pain. And it was being done to him. The industry was telling him to take insulin. Now, taking insulin and, and taking PBJs and orange juice to counteract the insulin is like hammering the throttle and hammering the brakes all in one day. I have no less than three clients that are off insulin. And it's drastic. So from what I understand, Anthony, the way you got off insulin is you moderated your carbohydrates. You stopped with the orange juice. You stopped with the PBJs. And you started counting your carbs for the day. How much yeah, do so, you feel better? Oh, man, I, I, I feel great. I'm able to like... You know, I'm walking around. I'm able to do normal tasks. Like I wasn't able. To, I mean, I could put my shoes on now. I mean, it's terrible that your 80 year old grandfather has to ask you, "Hey, do you need help putting your shoes on?" You know, I mean, imagine how that feels. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's uh it's it's life changing. Um, am I still overweight? Can I still lose weight? Of course. You know, just like Bill said, this is actually a lifestyle change. It's not a diet. You have to really commit to it. Um. So those, you know, so, so those of you who, you know, who want to, uh, uh, you know, the burritos, uh, going into that, I, I eat a burrito a day and it's, it's quick. Uh, it's, it's easy. I'm getting all my, you know, vitamins, nutrients, all the protein I need. Um, and it helps out and I'm continuing to lose weight. I went from 200 and I believe 279 down to 238 pounds is where I'm sitting at now. So Bravo, it's a lot Anthony. of weight to lose. Thank you, Anthony, for sharing. Hey, one thing I want to be share is I hear a lot of uh, organic, gluten-free, non-GMO. It sounds really, really good. But nobody's dying tomorrow from that. And I, I get people saying, I heard Diet Coke's bad. I heard this is bad, this bad. And I come back to, well, how many people are dying tomorrow from that? My goal is to stay focused on the problem. It's the 200 pounds of sugar in our food. That's the problem. And let's get good at that. And then we can worry about all the specialty stuff. Um, the next part of PowerPoint is the basic keto diet, uh, the foods to get, where to buy them at, all that. It's all in here. And then I, I have a section on Dr. Berg. Dr. Berg has studied um, pretty much all facets of health tied to limiting carbohydrates, the reduced inflammation. All the videos are here. And I study this about an hour a day and I've collected in a, a version where you can just go right here. Um, I have an interesting lady friend who was on a very high carbohydrate diet and God help me if I ever said anything. And I have, I don't say anything, but it's a year later and she gets protein, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. It's like osmosis. If you want to make a difference, just do it because you can't say it. Because if you say it, you're now creating an issue. I've had one or two times my my daughters went through some issues where they were eating. I didn't say anything. I just led by example. So these videos are awesome. It's all, I mean, it's the best of the best that I put together. And then, Brian, will you talk about your ebooks real quick? Yeah. So I just got a couple of ebooks on, uh, <clears throat> on keto, on the process of keto, on what it is, um, what foods to eat. Uh, kind of how to play how to plan your day there's some information about shopping so there's two books um, ketogenic diet 101 and it just kind of it gives you an overall idea of what being keto is how you do it and uh, what you can expect so it's just a just a good resource for information um, the clever keto dieting gives you a little bit more um, it goes a, a little bit more into like the, the how, how to's, the changes you need to make, um, you know, the little stuff that you can do to make a, make a big difference uh, towards a, a ketogenic lifestyle. So they're just good resources. Um, I think they're, 
One of them is quite long. The other one's 60 or 70 pages. But um, good reads. If you want to know, if you don't know a lot about keto, you want to know about keto and and what it is and, and how to do it. And they're just good, good information. Now, real quick, you're a consultant to the, uh, the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. So I, I contract with them. Um, I, I've worked with a couple different wellness companies. One was WellPoint and they did all the nutrition um, uh, corporate wellness programs for the federal employees in Nevada and California. So like federal probation, federal prisons. So I've gone around and done a lot of seminars. I'm now contracted with the uh, Stan County Sheriff. I do uh, their nutrition for them. Um, been doing it a little over a year or so. And I, I'm on site once a week. Um, we have the burritos in there. Uh, got a lot of guys eating them. Um, just makes it easy. You know, that, that's the thing with the question. What sure. are the two things when you sit down with an officer, what are the two things that jump at you the most? The two opportunities, the two paradigms, the two things that jump, because that's a high stress job. They're active. What are the two things you see? Well, so just to be clear, I work with, with, uh, deputies. I also, excuse me. I also work with people in the prison and the admin staff. So I would say it depends a little bit on the group, but I see a lot of, of, uh, from, from the admin staff, a lot of inactivity, um, because they're sitting all day. And I think from the, like, uh, sheriff's deputy and prison side, it's all about convenience. You know, they're the, the deputies are out in their cars and they stop and get quick food, you know, because they're, they're busy. They're running from spot to spot. Um, so for them, they need a solution for that. Same thing with the, the, uh, correctional officers, you know, they're, they're working, especially now, I don't know if, you know, you all know, but a lot of law uh, enforcement departments are so understaffed that they're doing mandatory 16s, three, four, five days a week. And so they're working so much. It's all about having a convenient option that's healthy, um, ready to go and easy. So I, I would say that that's probably the most so biggest convenient. thing. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a quick intro. Uh, I have a client named Dick Silliman, and he's on. And I just want him to talk real quick. I've been working with him for about five months. Um, I think he went from the 250, 260 range, and he's in the 210s range or even lower, 203. But nice. the main thing is, is this shift from food is comfort to food is fuel and that belief system. So, Dick, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Bill, uh, for inviting me today. Um, yeah, as Bill said, you know, I'll, I'll give you some more background. Bill may not even have. I was also a fat kid. Uh, never picked for a team until only the pity choice at the end. I was one of the two guys left. Um, and, you know, it's been a lifelong yo-yo, as I think everyone's familiar. Um, we could say it's DNA. We could make a lot of excuses. Um, but I, uh, I'm i a musician uh, and an engineer. Uh, met a fellow musician who had worked with Bill and I didn't even recognize him. His name is Jesse. He's incredible. He looked like 20 years, 25 years younger uh, when I met up with him. And he said, well, there's this guy, Bill, you should connect with him. Uh, so um, it's it's just, you know, a word of mouth referral kind of thing. And um, Bill's my coach for fitness. I'm delighted to say that uh, I'm currently at 203, probably the lowest weight I've been in uh, 20 years. And the difference this time is be staying off because we were successful over the last five months. And I have to say, honestly, this has also been the easiest uh, transition talking about all the other keto slash proteins. Okay, can I, I want to interrupt you real quick. Okay. Yeah. So I think that is so important because so many people think this is difficult. It is not difficult. It's just choices. Dick, go ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, Bill has a couple of sayings that are really uh, stick in your mind, like food is fuel. That was a big one for me um, because I hadn't been thinking about it in that way before. So I really would say, well, I'm going to be sitting in Zoom calls for the next four hours meetings. Do I really want to have, you know, something, a, a whole big meal uh, when I'm going to be idle? 
because you know thinking about different times throughout the day when I'm going to be much more active and when I'm going to be less active, just sort of thinking through adding the fuel when you need it uh, instead of you know when it's convenient. Um, but I would say uh, I'm feel grateful. Um, I decided to move the goalposts because um, when I started with Bill talking about belief systems, I didn't really believe I could get under 200. I said, it's just not in my DNA. My dad was a type two diabetic. He actually got off the insulin all through diet. So I had a proof point uh, years ago that that works. Um, but I wanted to um, see if I could possibly get under 200. And now that I'm just about 200, I'm going to say um, set a new goal uh, somewhere between 180, 190. I think it's going to be very difficult. Uh, but I re-upped with Bill to help me uh, on this next phase of the journey because um, although I feel great and talk about tying your shoes and all those things, it's so much easier. I love to ride my bike and now it's a lot easier to get on and get off. Uh, and when I'm on stage, I have so much more energy. So life is way better, only five months in. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all the way down into the 180s, but for my frame and for my size, I mean, I think it's the appropriate place to be. It's a little bit of vanity, but um, this is easy enough that I want to keep going. Right on, Dick. Thank you for sharing. Brian, take over the solutions. Okay, so we've, you know, at the fitness meal, we've come up with some solutions. Um, the first one is the keto burrito. Um, it's convenient. It tastes great. Uh each burrito, we have chicken, pork, and steak. They have between 31 and 37 grams of protein, between three and seven net carb, and 25 grams of fiber. The reason the fiber, well, the fiber is important for a couple reasons. Number one, it it's good for you in general. Uh, it's good for cholesterol levels. It just does all kinds of good stuff. It helps you go to the bathroom. But it also helps to slow the absorption of the nutrients down, which which even more helps to stabilize blood sugar. So not only are we not having carbohydrates and we're having lots of protein, which also helps, but we're having 25 grams of fiber. Um, the chicken burrito has a little bit of a kick to it. It's, it's personally my favorite, but the steak and pork are, are awesome as well. Um, we made it really, really convenient and affordable. They're shipped right to your house. I actually sell them at my shop. I think I've, I've gone through probably close to a half pallet at my store. Um, everyone that's tried them so far has absolutely loved them. And we, I don't know, I think we have, what are we up to? Like 70 ratings or something online, Bill? 65? It's funny. Okay, so we have 64 five-star. Okay. Yeah. And we have one four-star. But the guy oh. said it's the best cookie he's ever had. So I'm like, how do you get a five star out of the best? But it's it's good. And yeah. people tell me they taste good. No, they're unreal. Okay. Because yeah. if you have food and it extends your life to 200 years old and you look 20, if it doesn't taste good, people aren't going to eat it. And well, Brian, it does... 25 grams of fiber, the RDA is 20. And the average person gets in two grams of fiber a day. It is one of the biggest opportunities but people don't want whole oats and they don't want vegetables. What's the tortilla taste like? Does it taste like it's heavy in fiber? So, yeah, so that's an interesting point. So I've had a lot of high fiber, low, low carbohydrate tortillas, like the, the mission carb balance and they're okay, but they don't taste like a tortilla. This tortilla actually tastes like a regular tortilla. Uh, the texture is right. It's not as, I don't know how to describe it. Salty, maybe. If you've, if you've, there's a taste associated with other high fiber tortillas if you've ever had them. And this one, this one is excellent. In fact, I have a, a friend that is about the pickiest person on the planet when it comes to food. He, you know, if he buys food and it's not like if he goes out to a restaurant and it's not hot, he just won't eat it. I mean, he is extraordinarily picky. And uh, I gave him some burritos and he was like, there's, you know, He's like, yeah, okay, I'll try them. And he actually liked them. And so, and I literally don't know anyone more picky than that when it comes to eating. So they really genuinely are not just good for healthy food. Like they are good for any food. Um, now tell so, me about the cookie. You helped me design it. Does it solve a problem? Yeah. So, so basically um, the keto cookie is an interesting product. It's entirely unique. There's nothing else like it on the market. Um, it's a, uh, four grams of fiber. So again, more fiber, six grams of protein and a zero net carb. And 
the thing that makes this cookie unique is that it is a complete multivitamin and it's not uh, it's not like a sprinkle of vitamins like we, we we designed it for people that have a hard time absorbing vitamins so it's actually a, a pretty hefty dose um it's a one month supply of vitamins so uh, talking about you know um changing your diet and your lifestyle and you know you're cutting certain things out a lot of times you know sweets are a crutch for people well you know with this cookie you get to eat one cookie a day it's a it's a month supply and that gives you your craving for sweets and it's your multivitamin all in one so it's a um it is a phenomenal product um it's available on our website it's available at walmart uh, walmart.com um soon to be costco and and so it's it's a phenomenal product um if you if you like a lemon cookie, you'll absolutely love it. You can't taste the vitamins at all. So I mean that that that's a really cool product. Like I I I think I've that's probably what I'm most excited about because being in the nutrition industry and selling vitamins, um, you know, I get to complain. Oh, my stomach gets upset. Um, you know, they, I burp a shitty uh, bad taste. Um, you know, and this is just it, it's kids eat them. So it's, it's, I haven't had one person tell me that they don't like them. And they've also, I sold it. I sell them in my shop as well. And they move very well. So I'm very excited. If you've never, you know, never tried a, never tried them, give them a shot. They're awesome. So we're going to open up now to Q and a, you can ask me, Brian or Anthony, any questions. Um, the floor is yours. Don't all talk at once. Keep it down. <laughs> Any questions at all? This all makes sense, and you got it all. Uh, I I have a question for you. Okay. Sure. I was really intrigued about um, the information you gave us about the coronary calcium CT scan. Um, and do you find uh, p physicians now, they push for statins a lot um, without necessarily knowing if patients need them? Um, is that how this came about for you or how did you, I, I'm just curious how the journey came about that you found out about the scan. Cause I just think that that's fascinating. Whereas, um, you know, I I'm, I'm about integrative medicine myself, a little of both, but I do think the trend now is to push for statins and, um, without knowing if someone really needs those or not, you know? So in the last two years, I've taken my study of insulin resistance and the definition of health. See, everybody has a different view of health. We all think that we're doing healthy. I hear I eat organic. They make organic sugar, which is worse than cocaine. Okay. So organic doesn't mean anything. And most organic certificates are not valid. They're fake. They mean nothing. It doesn't do any tangible benefit. Now, I'm not saying a vegetable with a lot of pesticides is an issue, but Lizanne, I studied it a lot and it become more and more fascinating. When I first got into space, I knew sugar was a problem and I knew it was an issue, but I didn't know why. But it's this insulin resistance. And as I studied this, I go, okay, because I had a very good life and then I had 10 years of booty kickings. Okay. And I built a lot of character during that. And my health became paramount and I started studying it. And the biggest thing that, that, that I realized is what insulin does to our arteries and how we can be aware of it. And that's how I started studying it. And then I was fascinated because the doctors really frown on it. They really frown on it. And they start wanting to prescribe drugs like statins. And my opinion of statins, but talk to your doctor, is... I can't tell you how many people that started coaching with me that they went and got their blood work done and the doctors immediately prescribe all these drugs, statins, pipe, all this stuff. And within 60 days of adjusting your carbohydrates, there's no longer an issue for drug prescriptions. You have to realize people are just in tune what they know to do. So it was me really studying it. And Liz in this PowerPoint, if you want it afterwards, I'll send it to you. There's some videos from Dr. Berg on this exact topic. And I would say my cheat sheet in the last year is Dr. Berg, because that's all he does is study the benefits of a low carbohydrate diet. 
because we have to realize we're compensating for 200 pounds of sugar and everything. And so that's why I've gone to more of a keto mentality. But as for me studying and realizing people are walking around death traps <clears throat> with possible heart attacks and it could be prevented. So it's really me studying, if that makes sense. Yeah. Any and other questions by anybody? You guys are easy. Okay, there's a test, Ryan. <laughs> I can't. And my biggest thing is the um, I've been I've been working on um, on my sugar intake. Um, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I don't drink soda, and if I do, it's once in a blue moon, and it tastes delicious because it's once in a blue moon. Right. Um, but I know I have a can of soda. Let's be realistic; it's probably sixty percent full of sugar. But I have a very weakness towards fruit. Like, you know what I mean? I'll inhale a watermelon, which I'm stopping. I've been putting a banana in my shake every week, which turns out is not good for you at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then someone told me that as far as fruit goes, if it has berry in the word, it's probably okay. Is that a true statement? Let, let me back off a little bit. If you were my client, I would tell you, get your blood work. Okay, get a blood pound. And I'll tell you the blood test you need to get because when you go to the doctor, they're going to give you a complete blood test. Okay, CBT. I got one. And okay, you would send it to me and I would take a look at it and see where you're at your resting glucose. But yeah, strawberries and watermelon, I eat a lot of. Okay, blueberries are very good as well. But like apples and oranges, back in the day, they were very good, but they got a bad rap now because they're all sugar. Now, apples a little better because you got a little fiber but not much. Yeah. So most fruits have a bad rap. If I were going to have some fruit, I'd have a banana. Okay? okay. Okay. But it's really about your goals. Like is your body fat and your blood sugar and your A1C where it needs to be for me to tell you how tight you have to tighten that up right now. Uh, I don't have all, all, all my categories are on point except my cholesterol. Every cholesterol is way overrated. I'm, and one I'm of the videos on everything. Yeah. Cholesterol is way overrated. It's been a focal point for a long time. It's not necessarily the end all. And one of the videos I have is on that. But I would say if you're meeting your goals and your numbers are aligned and your body fat's where it's want to be, then whatever you're doing is working. You don't have to make a big shift. Yeah. And I think moderation of soda once in a while, it's all good. This is not about abstinence. It's about yeah. making the right choices. Well, it, it depends. it depends a lot on your activity level as well. Like a lot of people don't realize you can actually be ketogenic. Like there are professional cyclers that maintain ketosis and eat 500 grams of carbs uh, because they're burning them before they have a chance to do anything. That makes anything. sense. That makes so, sense. So like, okay. you know, if you're extraordinarily active, it's different. It just depends. But, you know, in general, a strawberry has eight tenths of a gram of carbohydrate per medium strawberry. So like 10 strawberries is eight grams of carbs. Like, that is pretty low and 10 yeah. strawberries is kind of a lot. So that's a good one to, to, to shoot for too. So I'm going to throw out a challenge, a 30 day challenge. I'm going to guarantee you 10 pounds in 30 days guaranteed. Now I'm saying a lot because I want to make a difference. You eat one burrito a day, 30 days, you're going to drop 10 pounds. And I guarantee it because there's so much protein and so much fiber, your appetite is naturally going to be lower. Still eat a sensible dinner, Still eat one day a week, whatever you want, and it's there. In exchange, I'll give you this PowerPoint with all the videos, the diet, what to get at, at Walmart, how to eat, and it's 15% off the first order. And if you're interested, just DM me, and I'll send you a link on how to do it, and I'll send you the PowerPoint. And we've got two more minutes, but that's my challenge because I want you all to feel like me because I feel good. Lizanne, you've been sailing with me a lot, and I got a lot of energy. I like feeling this way, and I want to pass it on. You know, and each each person that we get involved in this, they're going to tell others like there's a whole nother way to feel. And that's what I'm hoping to do is pay it forward. So when you say when you say like you do a day, are you saying like do it for lunch, do it for breakfast? You can do it for whenever you want. That's a good question. A lot of people can eat half like at 10 o'clock and half at two o'clock. A lot of people can't. Or for a guy like you, just eat it at lunch. Just have it lunchtime, midday. And, and you're all set. And you cannot make it easier than that. Well, a, a lot of people. What you're doing. Uh, the one thing I'll say with the burritos, it's best to thaw them out before you cook them. Okay. So 
even if I was leaving for work in the morning, you could take one out and then at room temperature, it's fine because it's all cooked or you can microwave it for a minute. So the convenience is there and you can eat on the way. I eat two or three burritos a day. That's that's what I do. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say also, if you have an issue with eating at night, because a lot of people tend to, if they binge eat, they tend to binge eat after dinner, then you might be better off eating it at night because like as a dinner, because it's going to be very filling uh, because of the fiber and the protein, but you're probably not getting 25 grams of fiber with your dinner right now. So that'll make it uh, a little bit easier to not eat at, uh, before bed. So you guys got the challenge. I'd love to go on the journey with you. I appreciate your time. I'm going to wrap it up right at five. And thank you so much for your time today. We will be doing this last Tuesday of every month at four o'clock. So I just hope this community grows and we can all lean on each other, support each other. So thank you for your time. And I wish you a good day. Thank you. Thanks, Bill.